The Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep is an iconic symbol of the Rocky Mountains. They are sure-footed and steadfast, and renowned for their large, beautiful, curling horns and excellent ability to climb. But as impressive as big horns are, sheep are a fragile species. Entire populations can easily be wiped out from diseases and other factors. In Montana's Tendoy Mountains, sheep once thrived here. In 1985, wild bighorns were reintroduced into the Tendoys to restore them to this historic range. They transplanted uh, 39 sheep to this area from Lost Creek in, 80, or in 85. And then in 86, they trans or relocated an additional, I think it was 19 sheep um, into the area. So. In 85 and 86, they, they brought in a total of about 53 sheep um, to this area to try to repopulate it again. Um, they let that establish for a few years, and then the first hunting season occurred in 1988. They allowed uh, three legal rams to take place during that season. Um, it seemed to take place very quickly, and the sheep grabbed a hold of it really well and took off. Sheep numbers in just a matter of, you know, four to five years, we're up to 154 sheep at the highest peak in this, in this hunting district. Originally there was um, a lot of sheep in, in the state and through a course of um, the years, a lot of those sheep have become isolated. Some of the populations have died off. And so what the department has done is it's tried to reestablish sheep or augment some of these existing sheep populations through captures of, of populations that are doing quite well. A lot of the original captures came out of the Rocky Mountain Front um, where they were established exactly that's where we got the sheep to do Wild Horse Island, for example. One of the biggest assets we have for wild bighorn restoration is an island located in Montana's Flathead Lake. Wild Horse Island is approximately 2,164 acres. The island has been a landmark since the Salish Kootenai were reported to have used the island to pasture horses to keep them from being stolen by other tribes. But horses aren't the only thing that have made the island legendary. Some of the biggest Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep in the entire world call this place home. In fact, three of the top 10 biggest rams ever recorded, including the current world record, came from Wild Horse Island. Wild Horse Island, we've, we've transplanted, you know, hundreds, 500 sheep, I think, have come off of Wild Horse Island that have gone to various transplants, not only within the state, but to some of the existing states around, uh, around Montana. It helps out the sheep on the island because when they become overpopulated, um, it's not good for the habitat on the island or the sheep population in general. But it's also great that we can use these sheep and move them to other areas um, that help establish or maintain populations across the state. Having this secluded, disease-free population is important for the future of wild bighorn sheep. You see, in the Tendoys, the story hasn't always been so promising. In 1993, they had the first all-age die-off. Um, they referenced it to pneumonia. It basically reduced the sheep herd from, like I said, a historical high of 154 and just that one year count reduced them from 154 down to 28 sheep that quickly. And it did prompted the department to take a, a serious look at what was going on here. 1994, 95, they suspended the hunt because of that all age die off to try to reestablish, figure out what was going on here with the sheep numbers. 1997, they did another augmentation, bringing in more sheep. Um, they brought 19 sheep in from the Rock Creek herd. Uh, 1999 was the next major die-off, all-age die-off, and they refer to that all-age die-off as it affects all the sheep. Again, it was early enough that there was just not a lot known about uh, these different variances of the pneumonia bacteria.
despite three subsequent transfers. This herd struggled for years under chronic, poor natural recruitment and heavy predation on what few sheep remained. In 2015, the Montana Wildlife Commission decided to use license hunters to remove all remaining sheep to eradicate the presence of any disease, which is easily passed from one animal to another, so that a new herd could be reestablished on a disease-free range. There was obviously a lot of emotion with that 2015 decision, um, good and bad. Uh, I, I, I think it was a good decision. It was a tough decision. Uh, I think it was the best decision made for the sheep uh, in their future. A clean slate meant a fresh start for the Tendoy sheep, a chance for a brighter future. History has shown us that these mountains hold great sheep habitat if we can keep them healthy, and finding quality places for sheep to live isn't as easy as you might think. There's a reason we continue to look at the tendoys. Researchers collect data from all over to determine good sheep habitat. One of the most difficult pieces to that puzzle is finding viable habitat that is removed from human populations, and more importantly, away from flocks of domestic sheep. Contact between bighorns and domestic sheep can be the demise of an entire bighorn population. Fortunately, they did an actual example using the tendoys of, of identifying good sheep habitat. So we just had their map right there to be able to look at, you know, where the biggest hunk of high quality sheep habitat was, and that's right up behind me here. We could also see the place, well, if, if we put them right there, it's kind of a central location, so if they want to start utilizing that country to the north, or even maybe down to the Lima Peaks, this would be a good jumping off point for, for exploiting those other areas. And also we had the historic information um, of where sheep were in here, and so we kind of overlay all those things and think, okay, you know, we'd like to put them up here on the muddy somewhere, and then just trying to find a place that seemed like a good place to send them out, you know, no fences, things like that. The big focus that we've got through the sheep management plan is uh, trying to focus on working with landowners in the area. If we've got established domestic sheep, domestic goats, ideally, you know, there's a 14 mile separation. This is a very different landscape from when they introduced them in the 80s. Um, you know, there was multiple sheep operations going. There were a couple different allotments for sheep grazing that overlapped with these sheep. And I think there are sheep right in this valley. We've got uh, three landowners in this area that have domestic sheep. And there's some rules and regulations that apply on separation domestic wild sheep. And all the credit in the world to those landowners They've been very supportive of this reintroduction and not only this one, but the previous one and the one before that. These are third, fourth generation, fifth generation sheep ranches. And uh, that's how they make their living. And, but they've been great to work with, great to talk to, supportive, you know, coming to the table. They're not making land anymore. So to try to maintain that 14 mile gap is tough. So the way that we run a capture is we have a contracted capture team that actually goes out onto the island and net guns sheep from a helicopter. They'll hobble the sheep and then they put them in slings and they sling load them back to us where we process them. And the information that we're collecting on the sheep today is we're collecting genetic samples, we're connect collecting blood samples for various disease screening. Um, we're uh, collecting fecal samples for stress hormones and then we're also putting collars on the sheep because these sheep will be released in the tendoy so they'll be able to track these sheep and see how they repopulate the area as well as monitor any mortalities. In preparation for this capture and translocation event, we did disease screening on these sheep um, a little over a year ago and so we went in and we captured 27 sheep on Wild Horse and did a 
full panel disease screening to make sure that they were MOV free and that we could move them to a location um, safely without them transmitting diseases to other in, in, uh, intact populations. So that's what we've got our head down doing most of the time is getting creative, figuring out ways to uh, work with other partners, uh, get other people excited about wild sheep and wild sheep restoration, but to actually see what those funds do on the ground, how they're paying for radio collars, how they're paying for helicopter time, uh, how they're paying for you know, rangeland and habitat studies and habitat improvements, uh, how they're paying for water projects, disease surveillance, herd surveillance. So when you see sheep on the mountain or alongside the road, um, you know, people put them there. You know, we're, we're well beyond the, the myth that nature takes care of itself. Um, it takes active management uh, to keep wildlife with us and especially a, a fragile species like sheep. On January 18th and 19th, 2021, 26 wild sheep were captured from Montana's Wild Horse Island and released into the Tendoys as the nucleus of a new herd. You know, this is just just sheep habitat. Watching those rams run across that face, you, you wouldn't have guessed that, you know, they just got here today. It's like they've been here for a thousand years. And, you know, you look at all that fescue and stuff up there and, you know, you need sheep. Um, that was a missing part, so. so I'm pretty relieved about that. Today, seeing everybody here, supporting it, wanting to be involved with it, um, you know, I'm glad I'm involved with it. I'm born and raised in this state and uh, 20th, 20th season doing this job. Um, I've been here out of this area for 14 seasons and I've missed them. You know, this is, this is where they, they need to be, they need to belong here. And it's cool to see them, see them back. So I'm excited. I'm really excited for the future on it. So I think it's, uh, it's positive and we're good to go.